Now I would like to invite our guests who are here from Adelaide to join this event. Let me call respectable Sir Irfan Hashmi and Sophia Hashmi. Please give them a, give them a big hand. Thank you, Sami. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Irfan Hashmi uh, and uh, I have my wife Sophia Hashmi here who lived here in Kotkiri more than 16 years and uh, serve the Kotkiri community as a pharmacist, as a primary health provider and uh, we are very proud about uh, our children born here and raised here in this uh, multicultural community which is diversified. When we arrived in Australia 22 years, uh, uh, that was a long time ago, uh, with a lot of excitement and uh, I bought a car which broke down so I went to a mechanic on South Road, just a story, and uh, I dropped the car, the car was uh, in a shape that it, need, it needed a new uh, uh, motor, uh, but the, the, the mechanic over there, he just said something very strange and he said that make sure you, back, you go back to your country and that was something like a shattering my dream and I said wow, okay, this is something new, I wasn't expecting that, uh, uh, just a random comment uh, and uh, I started thinking that uh, okay, uh, I heard about that Australia is a racist country, but uh, that was a comment that uh, just straight on my face and I was thinking that, oh my god, okay, um, I need to do something extra in this country to serve better, to make it uh, something good, which uh, probably not an average person is doing, so I have, I have set up my mind at that time that uh, whatever I need to do in this country is not an average person, it's every, I need to do something more than 110% or 30%. So that's the benchmark that I decide that I will make a difference in this community. And uh, by doing that uh, uh, work, we both register as a pharmacist and start working. Uh, Sobia started her job in Darwin uh, and after that uh, one of the big employer who employed us uh, in this uh, beautiful city in Port Piri. and uh, when we came to Port Piri first time, uh, we saw a flag here, there were, there were like eight flags, and uh, one flag was from Pakistan, and I was thinking, oh my god, uh, what a, is this a high commissioner, or is it a consulate general office here, in front of this uh, beautiful uh, port, and I just realized that, uh, I came to know that, no, this is not a consulate general office, this is a Portiri Regional Community Council Office, which have those flags in the middle of uh, the street on the traffic light that we have. We have one traffic light in Portiri, which we are very proud of that. And uh, so that's made me feel home. And uh, today, um, as you can see, uh, we have a number of uh, national number of different nationalities sitting here. So I would be very happy if we keep doing these kind of uh, uh, gatherings. Uh, you know that by doing these gatherings, there are opportunities coming out. Today, I just spoke to one lady and she brings six jobs here. And I was very surprised that uh, uh, I always say that bringing community create business, bringing community create jobs, networking. But at the start of this event, uh, Arts now here from Mona Town. She's looking for six uh, people who actually get me paid for appearance in some music classes and music sessions. So what an opportunity she brings. Thank you very much for talking early today, and uh, we will have you in the stage for a few few minutes, few, few, few uh, sentences. So I will just uh, like to say a few things about what we do uh, as a multicultural pharmacist. Uh, Especially, uh, we established an organization called Multicultural Australian Pharmacy Foundation. The main purpose or aim is to go out from our pharmacy into community and serve those culturally diverse communities who may be not aware about what is pharmacist can, what pharmacists doing or what pharmacy services can be available for them. And especially talking about health promotions especially talking about education and women empowerment. My wife is also very much favorite uh, supporter for women empowerment. And as soon as I came to this venue, 
uh, I met a couple of people uh, where I was talking about pharmacist training, especially culturally diverse training which is organized by Pharmaceutical Society of Australia to understand the needs and the cultural awareness of one nation which is a huge amount of population and uh, that training is called deadly pharmacist. So I was actually talking and uh, I was just saying that whenever you meet any pharmacist anywhere in Port Piri or Port Augusta, just go and ask if you complete that uh, de deadly pharmacist training which is now just uh, funded by Commonwealth Government and organized by Pharmaceutical Society of Australia that will open a lot of knowledge that how and what are the needs of our One Nation and Torres Island people living in this uh, and they're getting into the pharmacy. So that makes uh, very much comfort for us, like people coming from Australia, overseas, especially the overseas pharmacists. If they are aware, well aware about these trainings, so they can be better serving position uh, in our regional part of Australia. Uh, and uh, one thing I just want to mention that uh, I bring some uh, Cricket Australia uh, program, which is uh, Squad Pakistan, Squad India, Squad Bangladesh. Uh, these are the brochures which they have given to me to give away to our regional and multicultural communities so they can come closer. Because, you know, the cricket's heavy season is starting very soon and a couple of matches which can be entertaining for our country background, especially from Pakistan and India. The teams are arriving here and Adelaide is hosting a couple of matches here. So make sure uh, you join the squad, you will get updated information. And there's a calendar here for us uh, from Cricket Australia as well. And uh, sports is, is another very big tool which I have seen or I have witnessed uh, because Australia is a sporting nation, as we all know. We all love sports. Somehow we religiously follow cricket and some of our friends religiously follow footy, which are the two winter and summer games in this country. Uh, so what I have used the same sort of passion to make this like, a memorable place in Adelaide. So I'm just finalizing or consolidating a space somewhere in Adelaide, not finalized yet, to put some memorabilia from great players from past where people can come and connect and enjoy. And uh, I think I spoke to Ellen as well, so we will do something in Port Fury on a smaller circle if, if the space is available, uh, because we have more than 300 uh, memorabilia that we can arrange uh, and we can set up some here as well. And thank you very much for friends who arrived from very short notice, uh, especially uh, principal from Ikra College, uh, who is uh, known to me, Brother Honey, and he acknowledged that he will be having some sort of uh, presence in this uh, uh, in this event. And Brother Hassan, who arrived here early in the morning and uh, set up, yeah, they have a stand. If you can see, oh, yeah, so if you please stand so everyone can see you. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Hassan who arrived from Adelaide mm -hmm. and uh, uh, he will be talking about what, what passion he got and uh, uh, thank you very much Hassan. Have a seat please. Yes, and I will just head over to Sophia, she want to say a few words. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I hope that's a few words because everyone's very hungry. Um, Irfan actually talks very less of himself. He's been volunteering for Cricket Australia uh, and a lot of organizations uh, bringing back people to the Australian stadiums because uh, since COVID happened, there's a very low influx of uh, people who are coming to and buying tickets. So we really need to support the. Uh, we really need to support sports in Australia and Adelaide. All of these were is because uh, we are all members uh, of uh, SACA. There's a um, membership of, of opportunity that's open at the moment for Adelaide Oval. If anybody wants to become members of Adelaide Oval. Uh, it's this time now. They can easily get the, there's no waiting time at the moment, they're asking for membership. So that's one thing. Now, the other thing that how this came into being, the Multicultural Australian Pharmacy Foundation. When we started working here, there was an uh, influx of a lot of people from around the world. I've got Tanya here. Tanya, would you like to stand? I've got Tanya here. She's a pharmacist working in Oruru Pharmacy and uh, she arrived from Zimbabwe and uh, um, uh, I wish we had time we could ask Tanya to say something about how she's finding the region. So that's how we connected with a lot of communities. Tanya, you can sit down. 
So that's why we connected with a lot of communities and we thought that we um, really need to connect and have a platform for people who are arriving from so many countries in Australia and they need a platform. Like today, we are all dressed up in our um, Desi outfits. For Australian people, Desi means something that belongs to our land. So it's it's like a, it's a similarity that we have that we have a different same culture same so it's it makes us feel proud and it makes us feel very happy that um, although we have left our homeland but we are still uh, taking on with the tra traditions and the culture. So multicultural Australia Pharmacy Foundation came into being because we were thinking that there was lacking some connections in between the different. Uh, communities that have made Australia their home. Especially in the regional communities, there's a lot of people who have come from outside Australia and they have made Australia their home. So that's how this came into being. Uh, it's, it's support services, awareness, health awareness, uh, community outreach. We've got educational programs. Um, it's for people with um, culturally and linguistically diverse um, background people. So look, if you have any family member, even if he is studying pharmacy, um, planning to study, planning to do, a, plan, don't know what to do, and they're longing to come to Australia, uh, by looking at you or by looking at any, there's a lot of people out there in the world who really want to make Australia their home. And you know what? We need people to work. There's lack of understanding in Australian society that we need people in the regions. Myself and Irfan, we have always spoken for the region. We have always uh, wanted more and more people because we want people to settle in Australia and not everyone can settle in the big cities. The big cities are really good, they have everything, but we need a lot of a lot of more people are required in the regions for the re to make sure that the people in the regional towns are getting the basic necessities. The pharmacy is a basic necessity and that's how we created this platform. So um, we'll keep you posted if you all can join us on social media. Irfan is very big on social media. He is uh, a media manager for I don't know how many organizations. He doesn't even know. So if you can connect on Facebook, it's, it's, it's an excellent tool to connect. Um, TikTok, uh, Instagram, um, so he spends 24 hours of the day on uh, these social media, so I'm not very happy with him. But uh, he's actually able to connect a lot of people. So that's how I think it's one of the tools that he has used just perfectly to um, connect people, to change lives, to um, and then, in, to be honest, there's more women who are wanting to come to Australia than men. The men of Pakistan, I don't know what they're doing and around the world, there's more uh, girls, ladies, who really want to um, make Australia their home. So, if you know of anyone who's um, wanting to come to Australia, this is the person to contact. Especially the health. Yeah. Um, and today I have my daughter-in-law uh, who has recently arrived from Pakistan and she would like to say something. Her name is Anika. Hello everyone. Um, I am Anika Sajid and I am from Pakistan. Uh, I am a pharmacist. I completed my education in Karachi, Pakistan. And right now I arrived here to practice my training. Um, I am currently working in a pharmacy uh, as an intern pharmacist and I'm looking forward to work with a lot of people, uh, multicultural people you can say. And here if you can see we have lots of health professionals who are from different cultures. So I think what I have observed that Australia is a very welcoming country for all the cultures and if you are looking to go somewhere to work with uh, lots of people and learn new things, so this is the right place. And especially the regional parts of Australia. So, so far I'm finding it very interesting to work and I'm loving my work a lot. It's nothing like I am in a new place. It's like a family to me. So yeah, it's a, it's a very positive experience. So thank you so much.
And last but not least, I'm going to put someone in a really um, awkward position right now. I'm going to come to Idris, and Idris has come from Kubukiri to attend this event. So Idris, I want you to say something the event. How do you, uh, how do you feel? Oh, yeah. First of all, uh, my name is Muhammad Idris Khan. Um, uh, I'm working as an Indian pharmacist in Kuber Pedi. Um, uh, I have recently came to Australia uh, on 8 June. Uh, so far, the experience is really a good one um, uh, as far as the profession is concerned. And um, Sobia just said, me, I was, I'm out of words what I have to say. <laughs> uh, it's a really good experience, and the event and the gathering, I'm seeing the uh, uh, Gubarpedi is a really good place like to live and if you want um, mental uh, relaxation and uh, keep environment like no one can disturb you and uh, <laughs> uh, so that's, that's, that's the place to go like um, and the event uh, I'm really enjoying this event because I'm seeing a lot of uh, uh, multicultural people here and they are just they are uh, 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 communicating like a family that's really good thank you so much Look, we have uh, Tanya here. She's a pharmacist, but she's not going to talk about. She's going to talk about her relationship with the local church, right? how you find uh, and how you're finding uh, local church and local community in order. Um, okay, so my name is Tanya, and Sobia and Fanny already said. Um, um, <clears throat> I also came to Australia, I think about two years ago, and I found out that it was very, it was a very interesting place, and it was very open to allowing people of different cultures, as what has already been mentioned before. But um, I found my home more in the fact that um, when I was in Piri, I was actually attending a local church in Port Piri, so I also managed to find my religious um, aspects covered in that sense. So it was a very interesting thing because when I came back, when I came from Zimbabwe, where I come from, I was very, um, I wasn't sure if I was going to find, you know, the right church or the right place. But by just integrating myself into the community, I managed to find um, a local church where I started attending. So that was a positive as well in the sense that in Australia, you can actually find your home. You can find a place where you fit in, be it religion, be it... Um, cultural you can always find your hope somewhere so i've had a very positive experience as well in that sense that i did find my religious aspect covered and some people might have that doubt when they're trying to move here or they're trying to find their particular community but i feel like you can always find your home in australia so yeah that's been my experience <laughs> A pharmacist who arrived here two years ago and he's settling corn and serving the corn community and hawker community. Uh, what is your experience? Uh, if you can say a few words, uh, Shabazz. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Yes, I'm working in the area from the last two years. Initial six months I spent in the city and then I used the corn from one after I was in the corn. So yeah, this is very lovely community in corn. So that's why I'm really enjoying working and serving the people of corn, hawker and the surrounding area. I'm also a member of uh, corn advisory council council which looks after the uh, healthcare needs of the local people, especially in the age care people. So, you know, the working out there and serving the community is very good. I also appreciate the initiative uh, which is taken by the Japan and the family from maybe 10, 20 years back by providing the basic healthcare needs in the regional area by having the policies over there. So, yeah, so my experience is very good. I'm really enjoying working over there. And I'm also looking to spend my time other years over there to working with them. And we are also doing the, my HMR home education review required for the HK people. So I am also doing for the certification. So once I have so I am going to do the home education review, which is happening to the HK people for their contact education to the top of my mind. So that's all I am trying to do is trying to do something new. Thank you very much for all your contributions. Thank you very much.
Okay, thank you very much, Sir Ivan Hashmi Jasuri and all of the pharmacists. Uh, so the lens is ready and is prepared by DCSP, prepared by Indian Food Depot. Uh, there are some performances. Uh, we'll have them after the lunch, so you're welcome to go to the tables. The lunch is ready. Thank you. Don't touch. Don't touch. Don't touch. No.
ये मेरे फोन लगा है हाँ जी
Eastern U.S. users to qualifying orders. There is no. Everyone, please sit down. I request you all to please sit down. Everyone, please sit down. Let's start our function again. Everyone, please be seated and be ready. Now, I would like to invite Ellen Zubrinik, he is the Councillor of Port Perry Regional Council, to have a few words with us.
Thank you very much. I'm uh, absolutely thrilled to be here today. Uh, I'm a little bit passionate about our community and what we do in our community and how we can do it better. This is a prime example of how we can do it better. So yes, I'm part of the Port Perry Regional Council. I've been an elected member now for nearly 10 years. Uh, and I'd also like to just uh, recognise a former mayor, that's John Rohde. John, if you could just put your hand up. So John was a former mayor in Port Perry. He's here with his lovely wife, Karen. And we sit on a, uh, a committee. It's a new committee called the Access and Inclusion Reference Group. Uh, we're a little bit passionate about trying to make sure that services within our community are accessible and inclusive. So certainly we will want to have more conversations about that as time goes on. Um, one of the things I just wanted to mention tonight was the Port Perry Multicultural Community. Um, Hassan came to see me some time ago. It must have been about eight months ago. And he said, Alan, I'm very keen on setting up a multicultural community in Port Perry. So we discussed different things that we needed to do. And think, I suggested things like being registered with the Consumer and Business Services, becoming an incorporated body and doing all the work. And guess what? Hassan had already done it. All of the suggestions that I'd made, he was ahead of the game. He was absolutely, blew me away, the fact that how committed. So thank you very, very much, Hassan. No, absolutely outstanding there. Uh, now, the other area that I'm really quite passionate about is obviously attracting uh, professionals to rural and regional South Australia. Uh, last year, we had a group of Study Adelaide uh, brought up a group of international students. We were successful in placing some of those international students into Port Pirie, into Nearstar, into the refinery there, and also with Gadaletta Steel Fabrication. Uh, three months ago, a 46 has come up. Uh, so fortunately, it looks like we've got some placements out of that as well. So I'm really passionate about what we were saying before, Tanya, about the Oruru Pharmacy and things like that. Absolutely fantastic to hear. So no, that is really good. The other one that I'm also very, very passionate about is expanding the care sector with regards to NDIS, the National Disability Insurance Scheme. That's why having a conversation with the medical practitioners uh, and the pharmacists, etc., from there is of vital importance. I think there's a lot of really good work that we can do in that area, and I think we're just starting to to get on that uh, you know, on that road to recovery now to actually really make things work. Um, that's all I've got to say. Um, but I'm just absolutely proud the fact of being part of the council who's supporting this event, uh, and uh, hopefully we can get better and do it. Well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. Now for a patriotic Pakistani culture song, I will invite Hassan Hashmi and his beautiful daughter, Alana. And I want you all to pick up the lyrics as soon as you can and start singing with them. Whichever country you are from, you're welcome to sing. Thank <laughs> you. 